So I just wanted to simplify the timeline for you as far as music goes. So if we think first off of Fall of Rome, 476 AD, starting the Dark Ages, where the church becomes the preeminent social and political structure. That's why we study the music of the church. 600 AD, Pope Gregory standardizes what's going on in the church in terms of how worship is done, what the Mass is, and, and the doctrines, and that includes what kind of singing will be done and what kind of music will be available in Masses and at hymn singing. And that's Gregorian chant. Now, chant has been around in other forms, uh, and he didn't invent chant, he borrowed on the existing forms that were there, Jewish psalm singing, uh, pagan plain chant, uh, shepherd and, play, uh, and and other secular forms of singing were all gathered together and, and they said this is what we're going to do. It takes a couple centuries for this to take hold, but that becomes the standard singing type for the Mass and for the Church. As we hit 900 AD, 1000 AD, we see organum, which is where you copy the chant up five steps or an octave and parallel it, so you have a paste and copy, two versions of the chant going on at the same time. And then, over the next couple hundred years, florid organum starts to develop where you tenor or hold out the bottom line of the organum and ornament or sing bits and pieces of extra notes on top. And then, about 1200 AD or so, motets start to become available, uh, songs in their own right, and we've got a couple videos about those. And then, around 1300 or so, pan consonants, uh, through the works in England and Italy from Landini and John Dunstable and others, become important uh, and give us a different kind of harmonic basis. Now just to put in context some secular music going on at the time, jonglers are probably going on from 8900 and troubadours are probably going on from about 1100 onwards. Also Hildegard of Bingham, who's mentioned in the first chapter uh, of this unit, is probably placed right in this area here and she's a remarkable musician. Um, and composer and, and just a remarkable individual in her own right, but we don't, we're not going to look at her for the large test uh, because she is an anomaly, even her music style is an anomaly, and you've gotten some experience and exposure to her through the self-tests. So, last thing I want to bring to your attention is the timeline. If I ask you what the dates are, for the Middle Ages, you're going to say 476 to 1450 AD, and that's when the Renaissance starts. If I'm going to ask you when's the Gothic period, you're going to say 1100 to 1450. In other words, the Gothic period is a sub-period inside the Middle Ages. So don't get those mixed up. Middle Ages isn't 476 to 1100 and then 1100 to 1450 for the Gothic period. Middle Ages spans the entire time from 476 to 1400, and there are actually a number of sub-periods in there, but we look at the Gothic particularly because important musical things happen, and that's why it's featured as a separate period. So, Gothic period, 1100 to 1450, Middle Ages, 476 to 1450, and then the Renaissance is from 1450 to about 1600 for the Renaissance.